So as cities reopen and social distancing becomes a, a necessary practice, designers are sort of reevaluating re the places that we live, we work, and we play. But this is actually not the first time a disease has uh, changed the spaces that we live in and work in. So we want to bring in uh, Sam Cochran. Sam, you are a features director at Architectural Digest. I think this is a really interesting topic. Uh, my husband is in real estate, and we've begun to talk about whether homes that have, um, I don't know, better home offices or better options for working at home will become more popular m moving yeah. forward. So I think this is fascinating. Um, uh, so how did an increased understanding of disease actually influence the spaces that we live and work in? Yeah, you know, I think it's really important to remember that historically speaking, pandemics have always been catalysts for changes to the built environment. The bubonic plague led cities to clear squalid quarters. It was disease, rampant disease, that led to the renovation of Paris in the 1800s. And um, along the same lines, cholera and smallpox outbreaks led to revolutions in indoor plumbing and citywide sewer systems. Even something like subway tile, which seems so simple, that was uh, a material chosen out of concern for diseases because it can be easily cleaned. So it's really not unreasonable to think that the pandemic will bring about sweeping changes to the way that we live and to, to how we build our cities. And I think I can speak for everyone when I say hopefully also bring about more equitable living conditions. Hmm. So as you know, the CDC stresses the importance of maintaining social distancing. Given all the examples, the historical ones you just cited, what safety measures are we seeing implemented into offices as more people return to work, for example? Yeah, you know, in terms of the way that we work and, uh, and how our offices function, we've experienced so much change in such a radical period, a radically short period of time. Work from home, as you know, has, uh, has, has changed the way that our workflows function. Um, and some of that will be here to stay. Uh, we hear from companies like Twitter that telecommuting will continue to be an option. But as you point out, our offices themselves will have to have to adjust and evolve to accommodate social distancing. Uh, we can expect to see uh, adjustments to floor plans to reduce the number of uh, people seated, more partitions, uh, simple sort of analog interventions such as the elimination of candy jars and coffee stations perhaps to be replaced by uh, hand sanitizer stations. So, um, you know, I think there's a lot of small but meaningful changes coming our way um, that people will eagerly make in anticipation of returning to work. So those are some of the changes when it comes to social distancing at the office. But if people don't come back to the office, if there's more people remote learning, will that have an impact on office space? I can't figure out if less office space will be needed because there'll be fewer people there or actually more office space will be needed yeah. because the fewer people there will have to be spread out. You know, I think the short answer is that we, we don't exactly know at this point. I think we've all heard reports or, or this, this sort of question posed, what's going to happen to Midtown and Manhattan if people are telecommuting and these vast um, centralized commercial office spaces are no longer necessary. I could imagine, uh, you know, a, a, a paradigm where there are more offices but dispersed throughout neighborhoods so that people don't have to get on the subway. I do think what offices uh, offices will have to be very flexible. They'll have to be able to accommodate social distancing and also, you know, allow people to have sort of a solitary moments of confinement uh, of, for you know for solitary contemplation as well as communal spaces that are technologically equipped to um, allow for Zoom meetings and telecommuting. Um, so it's 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 a big question mark, and um, I know I know designers are giving it a lot of uh, serious thought. Let's talk about the hospitality sector, which has been especially uh, hard hit throughout this pandemic. What new developments are we already seeing within this industry to address social distancing, sanitation, et cetera, uh, both in the short term and the long term? Yeah, I mean, I think to your point, there, there's going to be two waves. There'll be a sort of ad hoc um, solutions, uh, again, things like sneeze guards and partitions and adjustments to floor plans and restaurants, uh, reduced capacity in hotels, things to sort of um, boost consumer confidence and allow people to feel that it's safe to inhabit these spaces. Um, I, I think technology is going to play a huge role. I think we're going to see innovations in HVAC systems that help to mitigate disease. I think we'll soon find ourselves, you know, not having shared menus or physical hotel keys, and instead we'll be 
ordering off of our smartphones and using our smartphones to check into hotels. So, you know, it, it, a lot of this technology already exists and we haven't had to deploy it in this way, but I think that these kinds of changes are just going to accelerate as we emerge from the pandemic. And we're also, or we've actually been seeing some stories about kind of the positive impact of us all pulling back when it comes to the environment. Um, do you expect that designers will be sort of, that will also have an impact on designers moving forward? Absolutely. You know, I think we've all seen these, these pictures of clear water in Venice and uh, smog free skies around the world. And it really makes it crystal clear for anyone who had any doubts that the way we were living was having very devastating effects on the natural environment. Um, and as we emerge from this, people are going to be super attuned to creating spaces that are environmentally friendly, not just for the sake of the planet, I think, but also for the sake of their own health. I, we've seen a remarkable shift in terms of our individual priorities, uh, whereas people might have been concerned with certain kinds of luxuries. I think the luxuries that we now crave are things like outdoor space and access to nature and fresh air. So um, that those those priorities will dictate design going forward for sure. Hmm. All right, Sam Cochran, really fascinating discussion, Sam. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys.